are back. Season 11, so excited for this. Uh, of course, we uh, it was pushed back and pushed back and all the hard work you did finally is on the screen. So what was it like seeing an episode again after that uh, that period of time? I, I mean, it was great because I, I, you know, I hardly remember anything. We recorded <laughs> the first two episodes at least, uh, you know, like a year ago. Right. Uh, so, you know, yeah, the, the pandemic pushed everything uh, screwy. Uh, and so, yeah, it was like, it was fun getting to see everything because I was like, I forgot most of everything that had happened. Uh, so it, it, it's a blast. I love it. I love that we're spies again. And that's and that's the, the fun thing about this. The Orpheus Gambit, of course, episode one. We are back right now. And from the beginning, just action. I mean, it was just yeah. action from the beginning, which is very, very cool. We get into play, you know, Lana. And later we found out Cyril, which is kind of funny, too. Uh, yeah. So uh, when did you know... Um, I guess that we were returning back to real time. What what date was that for you? Oh man! Like when did I find out we were going back to spies? Yeah, uh, be before space for sure. I don't know if I knew before Danger Island or not, uh, but definitely before we went to space, I knew that we were going to go back to being spies again uh, after that season. Uh, so yeah, for, for a couple of years, I've known, um, you have to but, hold that know, in your back pocket, like, but plans, you know, what, what are plans, right? Like mm -hmm. say you're going to go space and then suddenly somebody has a great idea and then, you know, they pitch it and they're like, yeah, let's do that instead. You know, so uh, no, we always knew he was going to wake up. We just right. didn't know exactly, exactly when, uh, but he's, he's awake. Hooray. So, uh uh, uh, yay he's back and that's kind of his his main thought too is yay because everything has yeah. changed for him in his world uh you know one thing i want to ask you uh you know after uh, uh, 11 seasons now do you say kriegerisms like just offhand like do you say yep 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 sometimes or it's almost yeah, like that, some people yep yep yeah that yep 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 was mine to begin with and i had <laughs> no idea i didn't know that i did it uh, so Adam wrote it in the script whenever Krieger started, it was season two or three. Uh, it might even be season one. Anyway, I, he was, you know, it was written in the script. And when we got to that line, when I was recording, I was like, Hey, what do you want me to do with this? Yep. 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 Thing. And he was like, just do that thing. You always do. And I was like, what? And he was like, you always say, yep, yep, yep. When you agree with things, I was like, I do. And <laughs> like, they had to do it for me. And so I was like, is this it? And when I did it, and they were like, yeah, that's it. And so we recorded it. And then a couple of days later, after we recorded that stuff, I caught myself saying it to somebody. I was like, oh, shoot. Am I allowed to swear? No, oh, swear. Dude. Swear all you want. You go for it. I, uh, I, I actually, I do this. I didn't know that. And then when I started thinking about it, it it's my Aunt Stella, my great Aunt Stella that uh, used to do that. So, so yeah, a little she, of Aunt she Stella. She the trademark on it there. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, in that, and that's funny. That it's like the uh, uh, Jason Mewes, Suchi Bucci's that Kevin Smith stole. He's like, you always do it. That's who you are. So apparently yeah, that, right. that, yeah. that melding is you now. So that's awesome. Uh, smoke bomb. Using smoke bomb is, is a great way to run away from weird, uncomfortable situations. <laughs> uh, so like that, that it, it, it's introduced me to that excellent excuse to run. Do you, I'm gonna and, run in a funny way, and that's what you do. You run in a funny way. <laughs> well, I mean, you just run away from a weird conversation or whatever. You can just say smoke bomb and run away now. Right, it's the best. Right, I agree. It's probably that's pretty amazing. So, um, you know, um, this season coming in, um, did they tell you what three year? Uh, difference Krieger would be like? I mean, before you actually started it, did, did, did someone sit you down to Casey or Adam sit you down and say, look, three years have happened, not in Archer world, but in real world, and this is where you are? No, not necessarily. I, I mean, you know, Krieger is going to be Krieger regardless, right? Like, it's just sort of what advancements has he made uh, both in genetics and technology uh, that he's sort of, you know, making pirate versions of. Uh, but as far as like, you know, they were like, no, it's the same thing. It was going to be Archer's. Archer was going to be the one with the biggest difference where he was now the low man on the totem pole. And everybody, you know, Cyril definitely has escalated. Uh, Lana's uh, whole life ha has become different. 
uh, and, and other than everybody sort of keeping it clean and, and uh, being with the sort of uh, modern day uh, uh, sort of sensibilities being uh, implied at the agency, uh, you know, Krieger's just Krieger. He's always going to be the weirdo in the lab, right? Which right. is great, I think. Well, just him and, I don't know, Piggly 4 or 5? I don't know what we're probably up to right now. Well, yeah, who knows where we're even at <laughs> these days. Uh, like, I, I loved Piggly 3, which is the glowing green one, uh, but I, who, is he still alive? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think uh, uh, Krieger's pets have a long longevity to them, if, if anything. So. You would think. <laughs> yeah, if, if he's going to be splicing genes, he's going to do something about aging, I would assume. This is probably true. Or we have clones. Clones are always an option, apparently. So That's true. Yeah, yeah. He's, he seems to have that uh, pretty well figured out. I mean, he, I must, he, he is one, regardless of what Krieger we have right now, and I still am one of two people that know the answer that came off of San Marcos. <laughs> you do. Uh, ah. Which Krieger we're dealing with at this point. But when you think about it, every Krieger is essentially a clone. There's a Krieger Prime somewhere, but who is it? Right, and that's 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 going to be the question until the end. And when his, I feel like some evil machinations are going to occur. Like there's going to be like the plans are all gonna they're all going to sync up, and whatever he has planned is gonna is gonna occur. And they're like, well, this is like a a twenty year plan that he's been planning all along. Yeah. You know, one can only hope. Right. I, uh, maybe it'll be uh, nuclear Nazi pigs, maybe? I don't know how it's, uh, it's going to work. Man, my whole th what I would really love for him <laughs> to do is build a giant robot, like a Voltron-style oh, giant robot. Oh, my God, that would be every amazing. Everybody drives individual vehicles, and then they all form into one giant Zord, and then, you know, fight. I would love it a world where, where kaiju started attacking. That's what I'm gonna say. But, I think. You know. I think, and he has to. He created the kaiju, so he has to. He has to destroy it. Like that's the circular. Right. Or, or, whatever. or an evil. One of the evil clones somewhere could be creating kaiju, and then he's gonna have to battle them. Right. Oh uh, well, but we you know what. Uh, we can go off on a huge tangent about the things we want oh, that, that Krieger could create hours. because he's got he's got so many things. I will say though that I'm gr I'm glad that we have the van back screaming for vengeance. By the way, <laughs> is hilarious. I've known, about that. I've known about that for a long time, uh, and and that one. And I've seen they 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 did the album cover pretty early on uh, for that one. And I really, really, really wanted to make a T-shirt of it early on. Uh, but, you know, you, you're like, yeah, you can, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I think Screaming for Vengeance, of all the van uh, logos on the side, I think that one is probably the coolest T-shirt. Uh, and the whole opening with, Ju uh, with Judas Priest was really just great. I, I agree. I mean, when it came to all the action and the, the speed, it kind of... Gives us a new speed for the season, I think, is really what it, yeah. what it brought into play. So I was really happy yeah. about that, too. And uh, it also, you know, expands uh, uh, Krieger's musical love. Now I won't have to deal with Rush questions all the time, which right. I am no Rush expert. So when people are always asking me about Rush, I'm like, Arr. I said Neil Peart in the episode. I, I That's how we grew up saying it. I didn't know his name was Peart. <laughs> Okay, well, that now people have learned something as well, I think, is really what it goes down to. I actually remember, yeah. um, speaking of the van, I remember a Comic-Con, I want to say maybe four years ago, where Krieger's van was driving around, and I got picked up <laughs> yeah. and taken to my location by the van itself. So did you ride in that? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely rode in it. With the, with the driver in Krieger cosplay, it was hilarious. Uh, so a uh, couple questions right here. Uh, so yes. Lucky, what's your favorite uh, Krieger quote yourself from from the chat box here? Oh, man, I, you know, I always sort of I love doing the final rant from the original Planet of the Apes, the original uh, with Charlton Heston and Roddy McDowell uh, is uh, you know uh, one of my favorite films of all time, and so getting to do that rant. Uh, has always been a delight to me. That being said, it's not a really an original Krieger quote. Uh, so, like, I, I really do love... Uh, I love two things. I love Smoke Bomb, as, you know, previously discussed. Uh, and I really... It's taken on a whole new meeting these days, but I really love throwing in the Me Too's 
uh, you know, somebody would say something weird and then throwing in a me too at the, you know, from the background was always a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> and that, that came out a lot during the, yeah, there's very little room for her improvisation in these scripts. They're always so tight. Uh, but uh, the one time we do get to really put in our own stuff is uh, it'll, it'll sometimes just be a line that says the group reacts to this and you get to throw in whatever you think your character would be <laughs> saying at that point. Right. Uh, and, and chucking in good Me Too zingers uh, during those uh, was a lot of fun. And it's still going on, you know, like it, it's fun. So uh, another question from the chat box here is, do we get any more Krieger tech uh, tech besides the cane? Of course, you know, that was the best, in my opinion, I, I loved the bonds when Q was actually creating fun, weird stuff. And so, yeah. you know, having more Krieger tech out there, uh, do we get anything more besides a, uh, a, a cane for Archer, you think? I mean, like again, like I, I recorded most of these things so long ago that I, I don't know that there's anything mind blowing, but I could be totally wrong on that. So, oh yeah, the, 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 I mean, there's definitely the helmet that reads his all. It's like the helmet from a Ghostbusters that Rick Moranis <laughs> actually wears on his head. That's what that helmet is. Uh, and, uh, so the, you know, he made a practical one of those, which is pretty great. Uh, you will see clone tanks again uh, in this season. Uh, uh, Those are always oh, in yeah, the background, not, I think. Yeah, there's not like a you know a brown note gun or anything, as far as I can <laughs> recall. <laughs> well, you know what? Now you say the Rick Moranis thing, I see it so vividly too. The Ghostbusters. I didn't make that connection before, so now I want him to yeah, say, yeah. I want to ask if you're the key master or something. Like I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the helmet that Egon, that the Egon puts on Rick Moranis' head. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I, you know what? Uh, I will say, you know, as we started the show, of course, um, Beginning Spies Again, uh, Screaming for Vengeance. Uh, the next thing that came up on this episode that kind of made me kind of a little sad was, of course, no more Woodhouse. So we've lost a voice. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? George died a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it is. It sucks. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, the show must go on. And yeah. uh, as we see, uh, Archer is interviewing valets right. uh, so, to, to find a new person to abuse. And, uh, you know, maybe just maybe he'll find a, a, a great one I, played I, by I, an awesome guest star. I Who think knows? that's that's definitely an opportunity. On the side note, I would like to try Eggs Woodhouse. I don't know what they are exactly, but apparently they sound really good. So. They are, people have made them, uh, and they are an unbelievably rich uh, breakfast dish if you're going to go to the Eggswood House. Uh, you know, you can scour the YouTubes, uh, like actual uh, awesome chefs have made th that dish, uh, and it really is, it's like a heart stopper. But, you know, one of those things that probably everybody should eat at least once. At least once in your life, yeah. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, we find out that the coma was three years. Like, we didn't know that until that moment, or kind of, you know. Yeah, that it was real time, right? It like was real each, time. Each year that we were doing a dream uh, season was actually a year of Archer being in a coma. So, yeah, they, they, everybody has had three years of development, right? Which we will be finding out, you know, about during the, the season. And and the crew has all moved along, which is very interesting. Uh, first of all, we got Cheryl on new meds. So we have new and better Cheryl, which yes. uh, as we begin episode one, that's always a good, I, I guess, a good link in, uh, though, putting uh, any any shackles on Judy Greer, I feel is a mistake in any world. Look, uh, but uh, but for I, the story's you know, sake, as we have. As we've already seen, as soon as Arthur came back, the cracks would begin to show in everybody's <laughs> new personas and everybody being all buttoned up and all that kind of stuff. It immediately, he's a, he, <laughs> he's a, a, an earth shattering presence uh, to all. So, you know. Let's see how long new better Cheryl lasts. I agree. Um, and then, of course, we have buff Cyril, which is something that we wouldn't expected. Uh, but three years is the right amount of time for him to get yoked, as the kids say. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that was that was interesting, too. I mean, um, uh, when you start to find out how everyone kind of changed. And, of course, Mallory isn't changing because she's perfect in her own mind and in her own way, of course. 
And she's also spent the majority of her three years uh, sitting at That's Archer's true. Uh, next to his hospital bed, right? She basically moved in there. Uh, and so, yeah, she and she'll always, yeah, Mallory will always be Mallory. Uh, it, the, the show is, we, you know, they, they had a little talk at the end of uh, last season uh, when he woke up. And she, you know, essentially it's right. It really is a story about a mother and a son. Uh, right. And how they learn to, you know, still learn to cope with one another in in their adult and late adult lives. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you, you can't get those two to change too much, uh, or otherwise the dynamic of the entire show gets wonky. Right. Um, I will say we have a brand new meme alert, and the phrase is "keep your balls frosty." So that's the yeah. next. I think that's the next phrase that we have to kind of run into and have fun with. So you know, frost your balls, and now my balls are frosty. Don't worry about it. So yeah. I, I look forward to awesome. all the fans out there making that meme. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Yeah, um, I'm and um, uh, the other thing too, and I don't know if you thought about it when you said the line. The answer to why do squirrels get so enraged when you're naked? Did you think about uh, the answers that could have been on the other side of that equation? Uh, <laughs> I, no, I just imagine that Krieger spends a lot of naked time <laughs> around various, you know, creatures and, and, and whatnot. And so, like, uh, who knows? Who knows what he's doing? Who knows if he's trying to live a, a squirrel life, who, you know? trying to become a, a real life squirrel girl uh yeah I, who knows uh so yeah i never really thought about the end i, I just love the door that it opens <laughs> which is what i love most about krieger and and that so many of his things i i think should remain a mystery right right the, the it's the the multitude of questions that it raises uh are far more satisfying than any single answer you're going to get. Right. Of course, that just shows us how weird our personal minds are when we come up with those answers, I think. Right. Yeah. Like, yes. That's, <laughs> like, yeah. It's like seeing the monster in a horror movie. Everybody's imagination is going to be so much scarier than the thing we're going to show them. Right. And so like everybody, what, what they cook up for the reason, you know, does it have something to do with nuts? Who knows? Right. But it's possible. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, I don't know if you know or if we're going to find out. Do we follow Krieger's love life down a little bit more? Do we find out if the digital loves exist or how that all works? Do no, we know? No, in, in fact, I, again, it's been a while since I did, I've seen most of these scripts, but I don't remember seeing Mitsuko at all this season, although he might refer to her, maybe. Um, but we definitely, there are no scenes between them. I, I know that. Uh, right. And so, who knows? Maybe he's single. I do love that uh, he and uh, New Better Cheryl were sitting uh, on uh, in the van together uh, watching the video screens. Um, maybe, who knows? Maybe that flame has uh, right. reignited because they dated for a season. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Both, both characters, of course, played by Judy Greer. I don't know if everybody knows that. I did not. I, you know, I didn't know that either. So that's yeah. a, that's a good little thing she has kind of put away as well. So add yeah, that to the resume. Girlfriend. Yeah. Wow. No well, matter, uh, no matter who he's dating, it's Judy. Now there's there's a, a thousand new fans out there ready to buy the, uh, the the pillow, the anime pillow to go to bed with. Yes. And just imagine Judy Greer's voice, I guess, along that's, with it yeah, or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. Imagine Judy in the booth. <laughs> Maybe we're just waiting to uh, find uh, a, a robot girl who can do the robot girl voice because we need to be inclusive to the robot voice people uh, out there, know, too. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, and so the, uh, the, the, the big, of course, reveal is uh, Lana being married. Uh, and she is married yes. to Robert. And a lot of you out there might not know that Robert is your favorite and my favorite, Ned Ryerson from Groundhog's Day. So let me see yeah. if we can get this here. Look at that. Phil? Hey, Phil? Phil? Phil Connors? Phil Connors, I thought that was you. Uh, how you doing? Thanks for watching. Hey, hey. Now, don't you tell me you don't remember me, because I sure as heck fire remember you. Not a chance. <laughs> Ned! Ryerson! 
<laughs> so good. You can Steven not, Zabolowski, man, so good. You cannot go wrong with that. And more importantly, uh, uh, like he just delivers all the lines and uh, all the awkwardness that uh, that Archer just cannot stomach. So I think it's yeah, fantastic. He's, he's always amazing, Stephen Zabolowski, and so it really is an honor to have that guy in the show this season. Uh, For sure, it's just so great. And, and, I and you know, the, and the character also looks like him, which is great. You know. And, so that, and that's like what that made me right connect. There. I was looking at the face. I was looking at the eyes. And it just started to mold in my mind. And I was like, Phil, Phil, it just kind of connected with me automatically. <laughs> so I was very excited when that connection happened in my brain. Uh, and more importantly, I'm excited to have him because, uh, you know, when it comes to voice characters, if you have someone who can turn it to 11, like that's always the key when it comes to people who can go after it. Um I will say I'm also excited about some other voices uh, in this episode. Um, of course, Jamie Lee Curtis as on, Agent man. Bruckstein. Of, uh, we actually yeah. got a chance to talk to Judy right before Comic-Con, uh, and she, uh, we, we gave her all the credit because, of course, all the Halloween movies, that's where she knows yep. Jamie, and that connection and ladder and bridge all happened in a magical way. So uh, I, I, I definitely did. give I her... Mean, but Jamie, Jamie Lee was a fan of the show and has been since the get-go, and so she was, like, super stoked about, like, Judy being in Halloween... And like, you know, Judy was like, hey, I can probably get you on. And she was like, do it, do it. You know, so like that that right there is amazing that Jamie Lee Curtis is a fan of our show. Uh, and yeah, and is now uh, a part of it, which is so cool. I think so as well. Cool guest stars there season. is a lot of cool guest stars. Uh, of course, Robert and, and, and Jamie for this one. And we'll talk about some in the next episode too. But um, I, I will say that I'm, I'm very, very happy about um, all the voices and how we're getting back into the swing of things here. Um, so as we move forward, I have to say we're going to episode two, Blood Sploosh, because we had a double. We had a double shot to get us out to make sure that we yeah. had a lot, of, a lot of flavor in our mouth as we move forward. So uh, whether you watched it live or... Or on Hulu the next day, you got a, a, a good ton of fun stuff. So, um, first and foremost, uh, are you a blood sport fan yourself? Did you, you watch the original? Do you have that 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 drive uh, the in you? Blood sport? I don't believe I've ever seen it. You didn't uh, see it? Oh, is, oh the Kumite, is, is the Van, it, it, the Van Dan. It's Van Dam. It's Van Dam. Uh, man, if I have seen it, it would have <laughs> been when it first came out on videotape okay and so and i don't remember that far back uh so yeah, i but i don't know that i've seen it i should i should definitely watch it uh now uh just to get a little taste uh but yeah uh it probably wasn't my thing back then for sure you know uh, no uh, jean-claude no. is definitely uh appreciated more uh looking back and seeing just how goofy those things were as to as opposed to when they were happening in real time, where it was like, what is this guy? Doing? I find an image. Here's an image from Van Damme when he was young and <laughs> the Kumite. And uh, yeah, so this is the original uh, back in the day. So Cyril, of course, being the fighter, the good guy that we're all going after now. So uh, that was the original. And it was a blood sport, of course. And um, if I remember correctly, that was the one where they put like wrappings and they put glue and they put it into glass so they could have glass yes. on their fingers or their hands when they're, they're punching and stuff too. Uh, so, yeah. So if that is, if that doesn't make you remind you of it, then you, you didn't see it. Cause that's, that's something yeah, that, that well, stays with you. Have, Cause I do remember that for sure. <laughs> so I've I think, probably seen it at some point. I I probably, I'm sure I was partying at the time. Yeah, you d doing all that, all that early partying around when all the uh, the, the kickboxer movies slash American mm -hmm. Ninja slash Van yeah. Dam and Lionhearts were all coming out. So there was there's there's a lot of there was much happening in those years in those days. So yeah, you could get a twelve pack for like four bucks. <laughs> well, let's not go back on the pricing and inflation. That's a different talk for a different day, I believe. Uh, so uh, of course, uh, Cyril is better, and of course the uh, the tactical cane, which I thought is a great addition to, uh, which I was I'm very happy to see uh, uh, his little tactical cane ready to go, and uh, I, I'm hoping Krieger adds some more stuff to it. Actually, I want to. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. I mean, you've, we've already <laughs> seen uh, in a preview. I don't know if it was a season preview. I, it definitely was a season preview, but I don't know exactly when it comes. If it's next week or when, but that that cane will 
keep uh, producing all season long. Yeah, it's full of gadgets. <laughs> it, it is a. It really is the one true Q gadget uh, that that Krieger has made. You know, it's it like multi use. Um, uh, it looks like a normal thing when you're walking around, but does super cool spy crap. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. You know, what's funny is that uh, we had to go in and re-record Tactile Kane uh, because it was called another thing very close to that. Uh, and it turned out that that was a real thing. And we were like, oh no. Oh, oh no. That's crazy. Can, uh, somebody actually for legal reasons, you can't say like it? This. Huh? For legal reasons, you can't say what it was? <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Okay, we will, we will, we will, we will just look out there to see what other terms could have been for a cane that was tactically it's, enabled. It's not far off from tactile cane, right? Uh, and you know, yeah, <laughs> like you can probably figure it out, right? But uh, you know, I don't know. I guess if you're somebody that needs the use of a cane and who all, that also does, uh, I don't know, survivor stuff. I don't know really even what it does. I just knew I had to go back and re-record uh, some lines and say tactile. <laughs> well, that's cool. You know what, though, that's okay because the uh, the cane is here to stay for a little bit. Well, you know, I, yes. I don't I don't necessarily think they're going to have Archer with a cane throughout you know future seasons or episodes forever. I don't know how that's going to work or if it is going to work. Well, yeah, I, I, I think he can do it, but uh, one, the whole point of this season is him trying to build his way back up to the top, right? And right. So, I mean, dude, he's like three years in a coma. He's he's remained pretty cut. I I was surprised he wasn't in worse shape than he was. Yeah, but, you know. I thought he was gonna have. We like also live in a. We're also living in a universe where super science kind of actually happens. So, uh, you know, I, right. Krieger could have had a muscle, uh, you know, a stimulator uh, attached to him at times just to keep things from atrophying too right. bad. I guess. Uh, who knows? There's all these unexplained things we just don't know. It's off. It's off in the edges. Um, so, well, you know what? And it's funny because we do get the return of somebody that Krieger did help before, and after this episode, might help again, which was Conway Stern. So yeah. we'll have to see how that works. Is that going to be something where uh, there's going to be another Krieger fix as a part of like a little end 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 clip or something? <laughs> So, so check it. I, I pitched and we actually recorded, I, I like, I was like, Hey, after we got the script and everything and booked the time, I was like, Hey, I have an idea, but it would be like a post credit scene. And they were like, you know, they're, the producers were like, Casey said, dude, we don't do post credit scenes. Come on. And I was like, <laughs> I know, but this is where it would fit in. And it, it was that cause Krieger flew the plane. Right. And so I'm assuming he's just waiting until they wrap up whatever they're doing uh, until they get back on the plane and then he can fly them home. And uh, so we recorded like Krieger was sitting on the plane and then his cell phone rings and he looks up and you don't see who it is, but he's like, Hey guy, and it's, you know, Conway Stern calling him to say he needs a new part. Right. Uh, I'm sure Krieger has something uh, at the ready. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's gonna it, maybe it'll happen where it's just uh, uh, he's just kind of the guy who shows up a drive through and he, he does it because it's science and probably money yeah. for for whatever oh, dastardly things he money. orders. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's always chasing <laughs> that dollar. Uh, and um, you know, uh, going back to Cyril being buff and being able to fight now, like it's kind of funny, and yet uh, they kept the Cyril mannerisms one hundred percent. Like he didn't, he didn't break that. He didn't break his uh, uh, his his sexual needs and desires. He didn't break like anything right. of oh, his his misgivings as well. So it's interesting to see that while well, the physical did change, but the uh, the emotional and the inner soul did not. I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, that's the thing is that like he he bought he bulked up. Uh, and then, you know, got to the, the point of being the head agent uh, at the, or the one of two head agents uh, at the agency. Um, but still, that's what I'm saying. Like, they can layer facades on all that stuff if they want to, uh, you know, all the, the, the their real, uh, you know, weaknesses and all that kind of shit. The, the hedonistic uh, tendencies of all of the characters, although suppressed, Archer brings that out in all of them. 
And so, like, it, it's awesome that in season two, like, Cyril's already just like, oh no, it's just Cyril. Like, he's he's right. not going to hold this position very long at all. We're gonna we're gonna have like a uh, we're gonna have like Brando big at the end, kind of by the the final episode <laughs> where he's just he's just crying and doing accounting work or something like that. So chocolate. And eating chocolate. We'll have to see how that all shakes out. Um, you know, uh, the other thing about you saying, you know, Archer uh, kind of uh, slipping in different things. He's still trying for Lana as well, even though he knows she's married and all these things. We haven't talked about the the child as uh, outside of the fact that she's, I guess, she's out of the picture somewhere. So we got to figure that out. Still, I don't think we know yet. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we will we will find out what happened to AJ. Uh, yeah. And uh, it, yeah, it's it's totally. It's a great answer, yeah. Uh, yeah, but we will find out. <laughs> All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. And uh, uh, then, of course, the question is going to be if uh, Lana is going to cheat on Robert the same way she cheated on Cyril right. and others, too. Like, is that yeah, going to be? Mean, that, that is the thing. Like, and that's the other thing is as big an asshole as he is. Archer always sort of calls shit out as it lays. Right. And it's one of the things people hate about him. Right. You know, anybody who just blasts hard truths with no sort of candy coating at all uh is frowned upon and you know he's like oh come on lana you know you we can't stay away from each other for very long when we're it's true and so you know it's yeah like let's see where that goes it's interesting uh because th th that's the thing and everybody always is like we've never seen her happier uh right her, her and Ned Ryerson, uh, of course. <laughs> no, his name's Robert in the show, but it's tough not to call him Ned Ryerson over there. And I don't want to be that guy, but he's a billionaire too. So there's a positive to that note too. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he yeah. he has a wing of a museum. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe so, too. So we'll see what happens with all that. Uh, and uh, or as Archer says, she's just coming back. because She can't get enough sex with him is what his his yeah. his 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 his, 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 uh, his lower brain. That's the way he, he thinks all things kind of work one way or the other, too. So, uh, well, yeah. of course, so much blood, so much action, a lot of fun. Um, and this episode, of course, we get old Cheryl back at the end. I guess we'll have to see yes. if that, that that continues forward. Uh, we'll have to see if the glue comes out of the. The, uh, the cabinet, as it were. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we'll have to we'll also see, uh, I think we left Cyril on an island, and I, I assume we're going to get him sooner than later, or I don't know how that's going to just, if we're just going to start, he's back automatically or not, but he was left yeah, on the island. Know, well, I, I assume it'll be a struggle for a while, right? Uh, <laughs> Cyril is... Uh... He's hey, got that guy tries to maintain the the, the cool line right. as much as he possibly. He's the biggest holdout across the board, right? Well, let, uh, let's let's look at his physical too, because I mean, in the first episode, he was holding a motorcycle. He was having Captain America strength. I mean, he oh, was holding yeah. the yeah the motorcycle and the art thing, and he was holding them together. So he's at Captain America level strength apparently. So he 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 could he could fly you know swim and fly all all, all the way back and just to be fine with just a little bit of a soreness yeah. maybe I don't know. He's always uh, super capable, uh, you know, and surprisingly capable, right? Just when you expect him that he's going to screw it all up. It's like, oh, no, Cyril will always come through. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, I, you know, I was very happy, of course, to have Kobe Bell back as Conway. Uh, we yes! had Bo Bowen always Yang, Yang as well, uh, who was there. Uh, and... Um, uh, just always great to have some fun voices return and new voices too. Um, and um, at the end, you know, I, I don't believe I know who it is, but it said in memory of Ron Liebman. Is that correct? So Ron, yeah, that that uh, was Jessica's husband who passed away, but uh, and he played Ron Cadillac on the show. He was That's Mallory's right. husband, Ron Cadillac. And so, uh, yeah, a definite huge part of our show for a few seasons. Uh, and a, a beloved man, just a wonderful a uh, human being and uh, a legendary actor, uh, both on stage and screen. Um, and so, yeah, big loss. Uh, uh, but yeah, he, he unfortunately passed away he, it's either earlier this year or late last year. Who knows uh, right. you know, what time is anymore? Uh, you know. I tried to IMDb it, but for some reason it was giving me writers. It wasn't giving me like actors and I couldn't find out why it was wrong. So that's why it's good to know. Also for yeah. all the fans out there too. Um, so the first two episodes are down. We have more to go. Um, FX every Wednesday is going to be amazing. Every night, uh, 10 p.m. And then of course Hulu the next day, which is the saving grace uh, of the older people who can't last anymore. I guess I, I, I'm up to 10 now. So how great is that uh, that we're on uh, uh, Hulu the very next day? 
Uh, and yeah, it's, it's FXX. Uh, don't forget. Uh, FXX, that is correct. That FXX. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, I love, love, love the fact that uh, fans who have cut the cord uh, can jump over uh, to Hulu the very next day and see uh, the episodes. It's really super cool, man. It really is. And actually, as I was watching over again, I was kind of like backing up a little bit here or there when I walked out of the room for something really quick. So having that ability is just a godsend yeah. in this day and age. Uh, I mean, for, yeah. Yeah, for anyone who had to record stuff on VHS in those old archaic days and you had to <laughs> go backwards, you had to hold the button just right to get 35 seconds and not like three minutes. You know, yep. it's, you know, you, you kids don't get it. You got, you don't understand the, the hardships we all went through to get you to this point. So, oh, dude, I mean, the days when there wasn't even those. And if you, you saw it on, you know, Wednesday at 10 or if you lost it, you had to catch it. Hopefully they would do some reruns and then maybe you'd see it that summer. Maybe. Right. Well, uh, luckily, uh, the discs are coming out too on Hulu. So many different ways to consume Archer. Um, so uh, before I let you go, I have to ask, you know, how are you doing? How is the garage? How is all that stuff uh, going along? Uh, everything's great. Uh, uh, Dad's Garage, our theater that Amber uh, Nash and I work at, uh, we immediately uh, started doing streaming shows as soon as uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, and we're still doing those. And I think they're doing quite well. Um, so we're chugging along. The building is still there. That's good. Uh, and I'm fine. Uh, you know, I, I kind of hide from people anyway. So having a valid excuse to do that same thing uh, is just, uh, you know, adds a little more awesome sauce on top of uh, the thing I've already been doing. Uh, you know, I love to hang out with my dog all day and I'm, I'm, I get to spend even more time with him now. So uh, yeah, everything's great. So as a voice actor, I have to ask, do you give your dog a voice? Does he have a specific voice you've given him? You know what? I, <laughs> you know what's hilarious is I never have. Like, he and oh, I, are so I have. I, I've had him since he was six weeks old. I picked him out when he was two weeks old. He's 15 now, like, and like he, I know what his actual voice is. And so <laughs> me giving him one just <laughs> seems wrong. Uh, you know, he also has his own last name. So like, I don't know if that tells you anything, but uh, you know, he is completely his own beast. So I, I what's I, his I last name? If I can ask Jackson, his name is Abe Jackson, Abraham Jackson, Abraham uh, Jackson. So, yeah. That seems and like an so, action hero like, name. You know, that's an action hero that's, name. Yeah, that, dude, that's exactly why I picked it up. As soon as I saw him, I was like, that, I want that one. And that dog's name is Abe Jackson. Because I thought it sounded like a cool <laughs> 70s action movies hero. Right. That's funny, too. When you were saying how old he was and everything, I was like, in my mind, I was giving the voice of Ernest Borgnine in my head before you started giving him the action uh, yeah. voice. <laughs> And people do, people, I mean, yeah, especially 15, uh, you know, uh, and he, he talks a lot, especially when he's hitting me up for food. And so like trying to translate that into some sort of uh, voice, I wouldn't even, it, it would be, it would be sort of a higher pitched board nine. Uh, right. It wouldn't be that low and gravelly, but it would be, it would be around there somewhere. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, I hope uh, uh, he, he has uh, many more years of action to, to come still. Yeah, and um, yeah. and more importantly, uh, he'll get a chance to enjoy all the episodes going forward of Archer on FXX every Wednesday, 10 p.m. The next day on Hulu. All the fans out Woo! there rejoice as back. We uh, we are back to the Archer days. And, and I'm happy to be here. I'm actually to see what else comes about, too. So I want to thank you very much for uh, for being on with us going through some of our yeah. technical difficulties apparently hey, man, the no uh, this uh, this newfangled things as much as we yeah, understand I mean, everything you know, it's very people are running studios from their home now you know what i mean it's not like it's easy right it's people not like I, people had to go to school uh, not too long ago to learn this stuff that now everybody is kind of forced to do from home so right yeah, whatever it's fine. Well, I had I taught myself how to do all this uh, in pandemic times as well. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it was under for work or just a loneliness to reach out to the world. It was my yeah. my digital cry for help either way. Uh, one quick sure. chat from uh, Mr. FS. He wants to say I uh, just wants to thank you for all the laughs he gets from being Krieger from from delivering right Krieger. So uh, I want to thank. 
thank everyone who got a chance to jump on. And of course, everyone afterwards, please comment. Of course, we had to change the link. We had to change all these things. So I am I am sad panda about that, but I will be okay. And so will you. And uh, this is still a fun episode. So I'm going to post this. And more importantly, we'll be able to talk to you in the future. If you ever need yep. anything, feel free to reach out. But beyond that, uh, thank right you on. once again. And everyone who is on there, thank you too. You all have a fantastic day.